This episode is brought to you by CBS All Access. If you don't already subscribe to CBS All Access, please use our affiliate link by going to talkthroughmedia.com slash CBS. Using our affiliate link gives us a little credit, which helps us to keep bringing you great content, U.S. residents only. Hello, and welcome to episode one of the Star Trek Picard cast. I'm Brian. And I'm Ruthie. And we are so very excited <laughs> to be doing this podcast. <laughs> I, I think that this is a dream come true. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so many of you may know us, and for that matter, you may be hearing this uh, first episode on our other podcast feed, which is the Star Trek Discovery podcast. Yes. So, yes, we do a podcast on Star Trek Discovery if you listen to us for the first time. And that doesn't mean that we are not old school Trekkies. No. We have been loving Star Trek for all of our lives. Yes. And we are not spring chickens. <laughs> We're not noobs. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so Picard is, uh, I think, for both of us, is is uh, a big. I've told people for many years. I've said this at least probably a hundred times, and the other podcast that Ruthie used to do, and I still do, the Walking Dead talk through that the two characters in television, in media, in everything that I have felt the most bond with the had this connection with are Rick Grimes and Jean-Luc Picard in no particular order. <laughs> and so it was quite the shock and just blessing when uh last August at Star Trek Las Vegas they announced that Jean-Luc Picard is back. Mm -hmm. So with this isn't going to be a, uh, we're not going to do our, our usual thing. Like, for example, if you've been, you know, listening to us on the other podcast, we have things like our yes, <clears throat> our yeses, and our no. And normally we have <laughs> uh, Anson Tilly has this, as of course, Captain Killy. Hello, this is Captain Tilly. What the he heck, hell? What the hell? Hold your horses. <laughs> we will not be doing hold your horses for this podcast. Instead, we are going to replace it with our good band, Picard. And we are going to play. Not good enough, damn it. Not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> so when something is not quite there or gives us pause it goes into the not good enough section yep. yes so anyway before we really get into it uh let's just kind of introduce ourselves to to people i'm gonna throw it over to you ruthie what do you want to say about uh your love of star trek love of picard love of this show anything you want to say Man, well, okay, so my love from Star Trek uh, stems from the original cast and the original series, uh, which I used to watch reruns of because I was not yet alive when it was originally airing, uh, but I fell in love with it with the movies. Um, and speaking of the movies, I was just alerted this morning that uh, apparently a certain Star Trek captain is going to be making a visit to my hometown and we are going to be watching uh, or he's going to be showing the Wrath of Khan. So wow. I know I was super stoked and I, it was it was on Twitter and I don't really pay that much attention to Twitter. I'm just not very good at it. Um, 
So, but I happened to notice, uh, I saw this, um, uh, are you going thing? And I was like, I don't know what, what is, what are you talking about? So I, I went and looked at it and it said that, uh, William Shatner is going to be appearing uh, and showing uh, Wrath of Khan and doing a um, some kind of Q and A or something after it, I guess. And anyway, so I immediately called my dad and I was like, "Dad, dad, dad!" <laughs> <laughs> so um, he didn't answer his phone, disappointingly. So I sent him the links on Twitter and whatever, and he called me back. And so I told him and he was like, well, I guess we're going to have to go. <laughs> I can't remember what exactly he said, but that was basically it. And I was like, yes. So on Valentine's Day, I that those are my plans. Those are my Valentine's Day plans. And I will have to report back later as to what it what happened. So at least we have that to look forward to. And uh, maybe I can see about getting a little bit of press access. I don't know. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, uh, have no idea. That's still a few months off, but so yeah, I am super excited. And, um, so yeah, my love from Star Trek comes from, uh, the original movies that I used to watch, um, mainly with my dad. And I know that I've seen all of them, but the one I remember seeing first, um, and I don't know, I specifically remember watching this movie in the theater and it was The Voyage Home. Uh, so it started with that. And then um, a few years later, this new fangled Star Trek comes out and my dad is telling me, oh, you have to watch this. You have to watch this. And I was like, no, 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 it's not <laughs> Star Trek. I was super against it. And my dad's uh, telling me, oh, it's really cool. You should check it out. And I was finally convinced and I did, and boy, was I hooked. <laughs> <laughs> Even though, as I think most hardcore Trekkies will agree, that first episode was kind of rough. <laughs> yes. yes <it> was. <laughs> but anyway, that's pretty much uh, how my love of Star Trek has blossomed from there. It basically was uh, my entire youth, I guess, more or less. I mean, let's see. Uh, Next Generation started in, what, 89? Mm -hmm. So I was 13. Um, and basically for the rest of time, I can remember watching it, Eight, you know? 87, actually. 87. Okay, so I was 11. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know why I thought 89. Anyhow, 87. And when, Okay, so when did Voyage Home come out? Was that 86? 86. All right, so it was not a few years later. It was a few years later if it was 89, but since it was 87, it was not a few years later. It was a year later, and I was sort of, uh, but I, again. It seems longer when you're a kid. <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, I don't know. I can't, I did not have a proper accounting of time when I was a child, apparently. And my memory as an adult has suffered because of it. Anyhow, uh, so yeah. That's pretty much it. Uh, maybe I started watching it in 89. I don't know. But by the time I started watching it, it was totally awesome, I guess. And uh, yeah, and pretty much I've been hooked ever since. And I watched uh, The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine and Voyager. I watched Enterprise and I liked it, even though it was not quite, you know, it was different. But I still liked it, even though they did some things that I took issue with. I still enjoyed it because it was Star Trek. But anyway, and I have waited so long for Star Trek to be back on TV. And I admit I really enjoyed the movies and I was really happy when they came out because I was suffering a drought. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. I've been in love. It's been a lifelong love affair. I would say me too. Um, <laughs> when, when, Hashtag me too. Just kidding. Well, yeah. My, Don't say that. <laughs> no. My love for Star Trek goes way back to when it was first in syndication. I remember that my first experience with Star Trek was unfortunately, I think the uh, Mugato the, when, when Kirk is fighting that, you know, like unicorn baboon type creature <laughs> and, and it scared the bejesus out of me as like a four or five year old kid. And, <laughs> and, that. I, I, you know, kind of looked away from Star Trek for, you know, maybe six months, maybe a year. But then I 
watch it again. And uh, I, I was hooked. And then I think what really hooked me was actually the animated series. Mm. And I remember watching that religiously when I was a kid every Saturday morning. And Oh, I don't think I ever watched that one. Yeah, it, 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 it's actually really good. And some of it was cheesy, of course, for, you know, 70s of uh, filmation, you know, animation, you know, the same company that made the Super Friends and all that stuff. <laughs> you know, Wonder Twin Powers Activate. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Anyway, so um, so there was that, and I remember like being very confused when I was, you know, seven or eight. Like, why? How come it's they're not playing Star Trek on Saturday morning anymore? Mm. You know. So anyway, but I kept on watching, you know, the original series for for years and years, and um, didn't see the the movies when they first came out. I saw them on. I think broadcast TV or or on VHS first. I think the first one that I saw in the theaters was Star Trek Four. Yeah, which home, I I think so. Um, that was the first one I remember seeing in the theater. I feel like yeah. I probably saw the others, but I remember seeing that one distinctly in the theater. I may have seen Star Trek Three in the theaters, but I definitely remember vividly Star Trek Four. So yeah. I I remember Star Trek Four as well. Everybody yeah. called it the Save the Whales episode. Yeah, it was, it was really cool. And I was in college when uh, when Star Trek: The Next Generation started. I was twenty, and I so you know that do the math. You now know how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I was. I remember that it's like bald captain. Uh, you know, how come he, he's got a French name, but he, he talks with an English accent and, <laughs> you know, then, you know, the ship, it, it, it looks so feminine and, and swoopy and, you know, why is it, <laughs> why, why is it, why is it that way? It was kind of like, you know, feminine Voyager swoopy. was, but not quite as, not, not quite as swoopy, oh, that's but, funny. but anyway, it, it took me a few episodes to get over that, but. But I loved it pretty much right away. And then I think was uh, where no one has gone before. The one with the, the first one with the traveler where they end up like, you know, like mm -hmm. five billion uh, light years away from, from home yeah. or something like that. I don't remember the exact amount, but a long ways away from home. Right. And then we started getting the measure of the man and, and Q, Q, who the next season. And then using the yesterday's enterprise little blurb there for not good enough that when, when yesterday's enterprise came out, that's when I knew that this show was a classic, you know, it was become, it was va uh, very much becoming a classic. And I bet you that summer I watched Beth, best, the best of both worlds. Part one, probably, 50 times on VHS, <laughs> you know, over and over Wear and over again, watching out. it. Yes. <laughs> and um, I grew a love for Star Trek The Next Generation far beyond anything, a any TV show, any movie, any anything. I love that show so much. I probably watched it, I'd say on average, at least three hours a day. Like it wasn't enough to watch it in syndication on one channel and then on syndication in another channel. Cause we're, you know, when I lived in Toronto, uh, for example, it used to be on in Buffalo and then it would be on in Toronto. <laughs> so you, you'd be able, and, but that wasn't enough. So I'd also watch it on VHS. Cool. But, but anyway, one day I was watching a particularly bad episode and uh -oh. I, I know you know the one is is titled Angel One. It was where like uh, Riker was kind of a sex object, <laughs> uh, Mistress Beata. And uh, I watched that episode. It was you know in syndication. I think I think the show was in season four. I want to say. And I watched it. And I'm like, that's not a very good episode. You know, if I. <laughs> If I had made this episode, I would have done this, and I would have changed that, and I would have done this. I think I could write a better episode than this. And then I got 
a question in my head that changed my life. I said, well, why don't you? I was like, yeah, why don't I? So long story short, I started working on trying to, trying to write a, a script for next gen. You know, at the time they had that, that open submission policy. Mm-hmm. So I worked on it. I went to a seminar in um, Dearborn, Michigan at one of the Star Trek conventions and putting on the seminar was uh, Brandon Braga and Ronald D. Moore. So two guys that have gone on to fame and fortune uh, within Star Trek. And of course, you know, uh, doing all sorts of stuff since then. Star Galactica, uh, Brandon's on the Orville now and, Mm. you know, all that stuff. So anyway, learned from them, uh, wrote a script. It was rejected. You could tell it wasn't even read. And (laughs) and the reason was I went back and uh, it turned out that I didn't quite get the format knocked. Uh, down pat. Ah. So I reworked the story. I shortened it by quite a bit and I resubmitted it and it got uh, rejected the second time. Nice. And uh, they say rejection builds character. <laughs> well, but it was enough <laughs> to get me a chance to pitch. So uh, I pitched directly to the showrunner, uh, Jerry Taylor at the time, season seven. And nearly sold the, what would have been the last story that they were going to buy for next gen. It ended up that they went a different direction and they, the, the one that it would have been in that, in that time slot was the, uh, preemptive strike, the one where Ensign Rowe becomes a, a maquis, mm-hmm. but that was enough to get their attention. And I started and this is like 94. So 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. In those years, I pitched maybe a dozen times to first next gen, then Deep Space Nine. Actually, no. First next gen, then Voyager, I pitched to twice before the show ever came out. That was ah. weird. Then Deep Space Nine, and it was from that first pitch to Deep Space Nine that I actually sold the story. So, and then eventually after five years of trying, I I just started, it was so hard to try to come up with something original Mm -hmm. and I stopped. I just couldn't do it anymore. Focused on my career. Yeah. And, uh, but the first time that I pitched to deep space nine, it was, uh, Renee Echeverria, who's now, uh, involved with carnival row. I don't know if you've seen that or not. I haven't watched it yet. No, I haven't either. But anyway. I'm interested though. Yeah, it sounds interesting. Fairies and I I don't know much about it, but it's like like an alternate reality or something. Anyway, so that episode was the the story that I pitched was Odo gets sick and can't maintain his form. And the only way that he can be saved is to go back to the founders. And that was combined with another story where Gowron was a changeling. Of course, he didn't end up becoming a changeling. It was Martok was a changeling, but Gowron was a changeling and that Odo would go back to the founders to be judged. So all that was combined with my story and that became Broken Link, the season finale for season four of Deep Space Nine. So that's been like my calling card for for years. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I, but I went away from that for, for a long time when Star Trek discovery, and we should, we should mention that you and I have been podcasting now for five years together Mm -hmm. and we started with the walking dead Mm -hmm. and Ruthie decided one day she didn't want to do that anymore, which I understand. And at at least in terms of fear, you were a hundred percent correct. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, that, that season five was tough, oh. but, but I'll tell you one thing. It was a lot of fun to podcast on. Oh. I think we were more amusing than the show. <laughs> oh. Well, good. But, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. Well, but anyway, um, so, you know, we've been podcasting now for f- five years together and when Star Trek discovery was announced, I knew that I had to cover it. And, when the first trailer came out, I was like, what the hell's with those Klingons? 
<laughs> oh, yeah. And I was pretty skeptical, but I said, you know what? I'm going to, it looks beautiful. I'm going to give it a chance. And it took me a few episodes, but I'd say I loved it. And I hosted it originally with uh, Adam Drake, who was a coworker of mine at my last job. And it was funny. Ruthie at that time quit covering The Walking Dead. And I started noticing how much we were talking about Discovery. (laughs) (laughs) And right at the end of the first part of season one, Adam said, I can't do this anymore. So it was like a week later that after you had left The Walking Dead, I was like, so um, so what would you uh, think about uh, being my host on Star Trek Discovery? (laughs) And And I said, sold, no take back. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. And, and so we've been covering that. And, uh, I know that there's going to be some people that are listening to us for the first time that have not watched Star Trek Discovery or have watched it and didn't like it. Yeah. Decided it wasn't for them. Right. And to you people, I would say that's your prerogative. You know, we won't judge you uh, on that, but we will say that we love, we love Star Trek Discovery. No, well, okay. (laughs) We think, we, we do think, we do think that you should give it a chance. Um, Another chance. Yes. Because. It changes drastically in the second season, I believe. Yes. And if you, like, if you watch the pilot, for example, and you thought that's not Star Trek to me. You know, I've gone back, actually recently, I started doing another rewatch of Discovery. Uh And um, yeah, I totally get that. Totally do. Uh Give it a chance. Let that first season go through. You might like it more by the end of the first season. But by the second season, when Captain Pike comes, Uh. uh, he is amazing. And And if you guys, if you haven't watched discovery and you hear about you know people saying we want a pike series that's why if i tell you he is the it is amazing that you know around the same time frame that we're getting back picard and we've had anson mount as captain pike because i'll tell you he is amazing in that role and if you are a true star trek fan you really 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 need to give that show a chance yeah. But I mean, if you like Star Trek, you should give it a chance because I think that you'll like it. It's, yeah. And I mean, unless you have some kind of, uh, I don't know, what, moral stance against the paywall thing, which I also get. Yeah. But at the same time, it's really good. I mean, it's complete. The second season almost does a 180, I think. Yeah. They did. I kind of feel like they did a lot of course corrections and i admit i was concerned at the end of season one because they were bringing in the enterprise and i was concerned i was trepidatious cautiously optimistic about whether or not they would be able to do it without completely destroying all of that history from the original series you know so it turned out great though so yes, that's my did. pitch for Star Trek Discovery. If you guys haven't watched Star Trek Discovery, I think you should give it another try. Don't take our word for it just yet. Give us a little bit of time with Star Trek Picard, and then maybe you'll believe us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We think that if you like us and you you see how much we love Star Trek, and th- this is not a put on, This is this is us, this is our core beings. We love everything about Star Trek and what it stands for. And we, we tell you, we think you should give that show a chance and we mean it, but that's okay. Get to know us and then, and then you can try it, but we're not here to talk about discovery. We're here to talk about Picard. So let's, before we, we're, we're doing a a little, like get to know you kind of thing, but let's talk a little bit about, this show as as we know it. So it's- Oh, hey, I wanted to tell you something before I completely forget. You were talking about the next generation coming on and it's a guy with a French 
name, but he has an English accent. I was watching the Graham Norton show from, I think it was an episode from last year, maybe, or earlier this year. Early this year, yeah. Maybe very early this year. Anyway, Sir Patrick Stewart was on the Graham Norton show, and he actually talked about that. (laughs) He, He said he recorded something, the opening part of the opening monologue or something with a French accent. And they were like, no. <laughs> so can you that's imagine the reason why oh my gosh. So that's the reason why there's no French accent because yeah, so it would be he like tested it, it for them and they were like, no. <laughs> it would be like Jean Luc Picard meets Inspector Clouseau. <laughs> yeah, exactly. These are the voyages. Something. I can't remember exactly how, but I mean if you if you want to go find that particular thing, he there's a blurb in it. I could try and find it for you, but I can't remember exactly where it is in the episode. Anyway, it would take too long. But yeah, maybe I'll try and find it and play it for you later cuz it's hilarious. <laughs> so, anyway, what we know about this show, it's going to be 10 episodes. We know that it's going to start January 23rd in the U.S. and Canada, and I think it'll be available on Amazon Prime, not Netflix, in international markets, because Discovery's on Netflix, but I think Jeff Bezos said, we have to have Picard. (laughs) (laughs) So, So anyway. Smart man. Yeah. And we know that it's serialized, much like Discovery is. But the thing that Kurtzman has said, Alex Kurtzman, the I call him the Kevin Feige of the Star Trek universe now. He has said that it's slower, more contemplative. It the showrunner of it is uh Michael Shabon, who is a Pulitzer Prize award winning author. And just, you know, based on the things that I've heard them say uh the enthusiasm of patrick stewart in talking about this series the the cast that seems to be a part of it how they brought some characters from the next generation and even voyager into this yes i I think that it's going to be amazing so and it takes place 19 years after Nemesis, right? Right, right. Something Which something like that. Was yeah. 19 years ago. <laughs> yes. So Exactly. They are I mean they they're pretty much, you know, real time kind of real timing it, I guess, whatever. Yeah, the the date that I've heard is 2399 is when it's supposed to take place. That hasn't been absolutely confirmed, but that's where we think it occurs and picard it seems like picard le- has left starfleet mm-hmm. he was an admiral mm-hmm. but he has left starfleet we know that there is a tie-in to the 2009 star trek film now we know that alex kurtzman was one of the screenwriters of that show which we know and we're we're talking about the movie where yes. with Chris Pine where uh, Romulus was destroyed. Right. Exactly. Just for frame of reference for anybody. Yes. Else. And the sequence of events created the Kelvin timeline, mm-hmm. but the destruction of Romulus was in the, as they call it, the prime timeline that right. that occurred before this like fracture into this new timeline. So. Which is, and Picard is obviously in the prime timeline, so. Right. Yeah. And this is our Picard. This is not a Kelvin Picard. This is right. our Picard that we watched on. Prime Picard. Know, during, yes. <laughs> seven years of next gen, four films. This is the same character. And he's been through a lot. Yeah. You know? He's gone through some stuff. And he left Starfleet, we believe that he may have been involved in a rescue attempt to save Romulans, like evacuating Romulus, I guess. Right. Taking them to safety. Yeah, some some type of thing. We're not exactly sure, but based on the trailers and stuff that other people have said, who watched the trailers and dissected them, and then I watched their dissection. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> so yeah. Yeah. These and are the things like, that we've gleaned. We don't know very much for sure. Yeah. So we we believe that that is a part of this. We also know that, of course, uh, the last film, Star Trek Nemesis, had a big part Romulan. of Romulans in it. Yeah. Of course, the the clone of Picard, Shinzon, uh-huh. and uh, it was shown there that the uh, Romulans considered Picard a friend. So a relationship was was uh, developing between Picard and the Romulans. So it taking that to the next iteration, we believe, based on what everything we've heard, that Picard was involved in this, you know, rescue attempt. Right. And something went wrong. Yeah. We don't know what, but something went wrong. We know that, for example, Riker and Deanna Troy were not involved in like they didn't die or something like that. We haven't right. seen we haven't seen Dr. Crusher, which no. I'm concerned about. Yeah. Hope me that too. they don't, you know, they don't say, well, your your wife died. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that would suck. Yeah. I mean, we know that from the um the finale that she is at one point in time captain of a medical ship. So Right, right. Uh, and obviously in Nemesis, uh Riker and Troy got married. They're still married in right. the show based on right. the trailers. Right. And supposedly data is involved in the in the show or he appears in the show or, or it before. could be it could yeah it could be before or according to some of the aforementioned dissections it could be dream sequences yes and based on that hairline but it is <laughs> it is brent spiner it definitely is brent spiner but uh he's, he's if been you have age to, manipulated <laughs> if if you happen to uh Look at that hairline <laughs> in, that, in that second trailer. I, I I hope that they fix that. But well, you know. that everything looked really good about him, except this except hairline. Something weird about his face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, the age manipulation stuff that's going on right now is not perfect, but it's pretty good. Right. So, I mean, that's pretty impressive. Like, I saw Gemini Man, and it was pretty good. I mean, I really felt like I was staring at Will Smith 20 years ago, honestly, for most of the movie. There were a a few instances where I was like, ah, (laughs) but, you know. Yeah. How was that movie? It was good. I liked it. I mean, I really like Will Smith, so he can probably sit in front of a camera and read the phone book and i would probably be entertained so <laughs> he is a very entertaining individual fresh prince oh yeah <laughs> anyway so we know that anyway we know the romulans are involved we know data is data or before or dream sequences or whatever but the character of data appears to be a part of this somehow knowing that data save Picard's life in Star Trek Nemesis, right? So yeah, sacrificing himself. Sacrificing himself. So as far as we know, Data did not survive that, but his uh memory engrams, I think, were downloaded into the before, before Android. So but he before could be there. wasn't exactly stable or something, right? If I recall correctly, so he couldn't exactly be, I guess, taken over, if you will. I mean, right. it's hard to kind of figure out exactly what the terminology is because you know, right? Artificial intelligence. Anyway, so we think that uh, that android that's in pieces and parts that was in the first trailer. Not the teaser trailer. That was just the one that had uh, Picard on the orchard. But yeah. the the full length San Diego Comic Con trailer. Right. It had data in a drawer. A drawer. <laughs> or before. Or before. We don't so know. So it was who. probably. I'm thinking it was probably before. That's what I think. But we will see. And the character of, I believe it's Doctor Girati. Trying to think what her first name is. 
uh, but it's played by Allison Pill. Um, I think I know who you're talking about. Yes. Let's see. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Allison Pill. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Agnes Durati. That's it. Uh, yes. So we believe that she is a cyberneticist. There is a brief still in the, or maybe not still, but a, a few se- it's few frames in the second trailer that has a bunch of what looks like androids that are mm-hmm. in like some kind of red or orange costume. Right. And one of them, the one that's closest to the screen has F8, which is much like the uh, soon type androids with their whimsical uh, names F eight fate, <laughs> you know, uh-huh. B four for right. So it does stand to reason that that's that it is an android, but we don't know for sure. Okay. So maybe Doctor Girardi has been trying to build new androids. Maybe that's part of this plot. Possibly. We don't know. One don't know. of the um, one of the dissections that I watched reiterated uh, Picard's defense of Data back when whether or not he was alive and deserved to be an autonomous being basically right. was in the question. The man. Right? Uh, he, for FYI, Brian al- is always going to be the one who's going to shout out the names of the episodes. I'm going to tell you the story and he's going to say the episode. That's how it's going to go because he remembers that stuff and I don't. <laughs> yes, I have I just, a photographic memory. Yeah, and, so uh, I'll be talking about something that happened on some episode of Next Generation and Brian will say blah, blah, blah. And I'll go, sure. <laughs> because yep. I'm trusting that he knows what he's saying. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, yeah so, they were talking the other, about that. Yeah, yeah, and the other thing worth saying is I hate making mistakes. So if I say <laughs> so something, <do> I. <laughs> yeah, well, both of us do. But but if I say something, I'm either going to it's either going to be right or I'm going to check it very quickly to make sure I'm right. <laughs> yeah. Or if I don't catch it until next week, I will post a retraction or correction. But I, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And I've done that many times, <laughs> yep. but, but yeah. yeah, so there's a pretty good chance if I'm saying something, I'm probably right. And don't right. argue with me. <laughs> exactly. And I don't, I just say, okay, yes. Um, <laughs> because I don't remember all of the stuff. And I honestly, if I do say something, I'm also 99% certain that that's what it is yes. as well. Yes. Uh, Both because- of us. Both of us are fountains of Star Trek knowledge. And if we and if we have something to say, we are probably correct. So we're pretty you know, just, sure we know what yeah, we're talking about. Yeah. If I'm yeah. not sure, I'll say something along the lines of, I think this happened, or maybe yes. it was that. But if I'm speaking and I feel like I'm definitive, or if I'm speaking definitively, I probably am definitive. Anyhow. Yes. Yeah. So one of that's the things, us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> one of the things that I was watching, one of the dissections, talked about his defense of data in that episode, The Measure of a Man, and how perhaps uh he is still in that good fight, so to speak, that whole uh, androids or people type of thing, you know, maybe if they are actually Noonian soon uh, androids that are being manufactured because it did look like a lot of them. Maybe that has something to do with some of the conflict that he's experienced with Starfleet. I don't know. Um, maybe, yeah, definitely. Because maybe there, I mean, if you recall in that episode, that guy wanted to basically create an android army. <laughs> Which is not really a new concept when it comes to um, soldiers fighting in wars. People right. always want to have expendable life right. to and protect the humans. So That could also play into the Borg, which are also a part of this, this uh, series. Yes. And of course, we know- Big time. We know that Picard was, uh, you know, and, and we mentioned- best of both worlds Mm -hmm. one of the quintessential episodes of the next generation and definitely the 
two part episode that I've watched more than any other Star Trek by far. Uh, and that says a lot mm-hmm. when Captain Picard was taken, uh, was essentially assimilated and became Game Locutus. Locutus. And I say that and on my desk, I'll just, I'll open up the camera for a second just to show you Ruthie. Um, Locutus. <laughs> yes. I have had, I have had Locutus. It uh, was a Playmates figure, I believe. Um, I have had that for about 25 years, I think. And it has been sitting on my desk. In fact, today, I, or actually yesterday, I took it from my desk at work, which yeah. today I just had my last day at my present job. And on Monday, I start a new job so that I work from home. We'll be working from home from now on. But anyway, so I brought, I brought Locutus back to me. So Locutus will be sitting on my desk watching me talk about Picard. <laughs> <laughs> and judging you. <laughs> and judging me, yes. Yeah. In fact, I have another, there's, there's a regular Picard also on the desk. So I have two Picards staring at me uh, ah. saying, you'd better do a good job. Not good enough, damn it. Not good enough. <laughs> anyway. Uh, exactly. So, so. Um, oh my goodness. So Lucutus, anyway, the, that was such a, a, a an important story. The Pivotal episode. Yes. Uh, the Lots of stuff happened. Yeah. Uh, family, the, the one where, you know, he went to the vineyards and met with his, uh, his brother and their family and, and you know, worked out a lot of that pain and, and, uh, angst, angst that (laughs) trying to get over the torture of that. Yeah. The PTSD basically. (laughs) Yeah. And then later, of course, you know, the following season, season five, they meet up with, you know, that, uh, Borg ship and they, they were about to send, uh, Hugh Hugh. back as basically a bomb. Yes, a knowledge bomb <laughs> with a a puzzle, basically a, a geometric shape that doesn't exist. The in it was somehow that would the Borg would look at that and go, hmm, what's what is this? And then yeah, and then that would puzzle be over to it. Shut the shut the network down. Yeah, basically. which I always thought was kind of interesting. Well, I mean, it's like giving a computer tic tac toe and saying when. Yeah. It's the same thing, you know, back from uh um uh war games. Right. You know? You can't the computer will basically burn itself out. That's kind of what they felt like would happen with right. the hive. So, or the collective, sorry, the Borg collective that they would basically just spend all their time trying to figure this thing out. So, yeah. It could have worked, but somebody has a soft spot. I always lie. I'm telling the truth. Right. <laughs> yeah. So. That, yeah, exactly so. Yeah. And didn't they at one point in time think that just sending back a self-aware uh, drone would basically the whole thing? Because. Right. right. And the and, whole point is that they're not individuals. They're collective. Right. And I think to to an extent that did happen but it it somehow got cut off from the rest of the collective and that one cube was drifting out in space until lore data's brother right what was rescued by them and kind of took them over you know as as a cult leader essentially yeah and the reason why was because they gave Hugh an identity and sent him back and he didn't know how to cope with that. So he was right. basically adrift. And they did right. that. That was the, I mean, I guess you could call that the law of unintended consequences because they didn't really count on that. I mean, they kind of right. thought maybe it would happen, but they didn't really understand the magnitude of it. And anyway, the Borg is going to be a part of Star Trek Picard. Right. That we know. That because we know. One of the, and I froze this image. And pointed it out, I think, to you Mm -hmm. that um, this one image in the um, in the first trailer 
says, this facility has gone 5,843 days without an assimilation. assimilation. Yes. And apparently what I did not know when I sent that to you was that it says the exact same thing uh, perpendicular to it in Romulan. So this yes. is a Romulan facility. Right. That has gone 5,000 blah, blah, blah days without an assimilation. So, And we see some kind of damaged cube it, that yeah. looks like it has been partially kept together by like force field or, or something. Something. Maybe it's because given it, an atmosphere atmosphere via force field, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And we see- uh, Because the Romulans see- are without a home world now. So they've got to basically go where they may and find what they can. And they are trying to do whatever it takes to, you know, restore themselves, or at least some of them, you know, are trying to restore themselves to their former glory, Right. it, it seems. So, and I know that there have been some, uh, some books that talk about the Romulans trying to usurp Borg technology. I know that supposedly um, the Narada, the, the, what's his name, Nero, from the 2009 Star Trek, mm-hmm. that that ship was somehow augmented by Borg technology. That's why it looks so strange. Weird. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's so. So anyway, somehow the Romulans are doing things with the Borg or trying to <laughs> essentially take Borg tech. They're trying I don't to know. Assimilate Borg right. Right. science stuff. Right. <laughs> so anyway, the the. The uh, actor that played Hugh, Jonathan Del Arco, is also a part of Picard. Yes, which I'm very excited for. Right. I am too. And shockingly, because I did not see this coming, but I, when I saw it, I was like, oh my <gasps> God. Jerry Ryan, yes. who who played Seven of Nine, yes. probably the, the best known Borg, aside from maybe... Locutus and the Borg Queen, yes, um, is is also a part of this show, and we see her. You know, she's still got her little Borg attachments, but she's very much human like. Yeah, she seems less. I mean, if you recall from Voyager, she was very, shall we say, stiff. Yes, not quite adjusted to being human again. Yeah, not much for small talk. Right. Right. She got down to business. So it seems like she has over, you know, the, the last 20 years or so has become more human. And, you know, we don't know if uh, Chakotay uh, married her or not. <laughs> that, I know that was a, a story at the end. Right. But it seems like from the second trailer, she is uh, clutching someone. And also two-fisted phaser kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, um, so it seems like she is- Still a badass. Still a badass. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> trying to save Borg or trying to- uh, Save someone. Yeah. Maybe yeah. save Picard. See, yeah. the thing we don't know is, is this her house or is it Picard's house where this double yeah. phaser thing is going on? Yeah. We don't really know. We don't exactly know who is after them slash him slash her and her being, yeah, that girl. Yeah. So we don't exactly know. So we don't exactly know who is being rescued, who needs rescuing, all that stuff. Yeah. We can make assumptions, (laughs) which is basically what we're doing. (laughs) Is it Isa or Isa? I think it's Isa. Briones uh, I don't know. is playing the character of Dodge, Dodge, D A H J. And I don't know what she's been in, but I don't think she's been in much because she does not appear to have a uh, Wikipedia page. Ah. So, so she is, must be a, a newcomer, as is Evan Evagora who is, I believe, Australian, and he is playing the Romulan uh, character of Elnor. With the long hair, right? Yeah, who looks okay. like uh, like an elf or, right. or something. Yeah, right? he looks like um, uh, 
Oh gosh, the name something out of uh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I was about to say Legolas. Thank you. Legolas. He looks like a dark-haired yes. Legolas. Yeah. Sorry. I would agree. It's late and my brain is shutting down. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So so we have that, and we, we have the rest of the cast. We have Santiago Cabrera, who I know he's who kind he's of an appears English to be the captain, right? What's up? He kind of appears to be the captain of this ship that they're on. Yeah. He's, he's kind of captain? sitting in that chair. Right. <laughs> Acting either, like it, maybe. He's either captain or pilot or something, but he, he definitely s- does seem to be uh, leading things on that ship. Right. And yeah, and he is a Venezuela, uh, describes him as a Venezuelan born Chilean British actor. So interesting. Yeah. So he's uh, right. he's a whole lot of lot of things. Lots of stuff going on. Yeah, and he's he's known for several different TV and movies that he's been in. I'd say the most he was in Salvation. That was uh, probably his biggest role to date. He was the lead in Salvation. Okay. And anyway, he he's a big part of the show, but we don't really know exactly as is Michelle Hurd, who we see more in the, in the second trailer. She is supposedly a former intelligence officer. Maybe she's Starfleet intelligence. Maybe she's section 31. We don't know. Mm, Section 31. Yes. Um, And has some kind of past relationship with her. And she mentioned something about like a covert, uh, you know, covert mission. So we don't exactly know there. There's a, uh, Romulan, another Romulan, Harry Treadaway, which looked like he might be a bad guy. I don't know. Based on the, the little clips that we see of him, but Mm -hmm. I don't know. He might be a good guy. Might not be. We've got a dog. Picard's got a dog, which Mm -hmm. I love. And not just any kind of dog. He has a pit bull, and that's great because Patrick Stewart uh, rescues pit bulls in his real life. So yeah. I think that's great. And yeah. and I used to have a pit bull myself, so that, that's very special to me. And last but not least, and we've ar- we've already mentioned Brent Spiner is is a part of this, but we haven't mentioned Jonathan Frakes and Marina Sirtis. Are returning in some capacity, not not as uh, not as like full cast members, but in a recurring recurring cast as, or at the very least, a guest spot. Right, you know, former Captain William T. Riker. At least that's what we think because we see him at their house. It looks like it sounds like Deanna and Will have a daughter mm-hmm. based on the second trailer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen that her name may be Kestra, which if you recall, Kestra was uh, Deanna's twin daughter that or twin twin sister, I should say, that died that she never knew. So it's kind of uh, kind of cool that they they named her Kestra if that mm-hmm. is in fact the case. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that, that we've seen. Obviously there's going to be, it's supposed to be slower than discovery, which is good, I think. Uh, but it definitely has action in it. Right. I think that the people that are behind it, and I know some people just don't like Kurtzman. I don't know why I don't really have a problem with him. And based on the things that he said, I think that the star Trek universe is in good hands with him. I think he will, watch the universe very closely and and is taking in the things that the fans say and like for example at the New York Comic Con panel he was asked about putting a statue or s- some kind of way to honor Captain Nog which I think was great of course uh, Aaron Eisenberg just recently passed away who played Nog on Deep Space Nine? By the way, have you? Did you get to watch uh, what we left behind yet? I have not yet. Okay, we have to correct that. <laughs> so, 
uh, we'll, we'll talk about that at some point, probably on our Patreon actually. So, so yeah, that's, uh, just a little bit about us and about this new show that's coming out. Uh, uh, let's just tell people where to contact us and you want to take that? Sure. So for those of you who have listened to us before, we have slightly different uh, contact information for Star Trek Picard. Uh, Much of it is the same. Some of it is different. For those of you who are brand new, please send us feedback. We love to get listener feedback. Uh, That's one of the main focuses of our podcasts we love to interact with people um i mean brian and i love to talk about star trek we could probably just sit and talk about it all we want but we like to include the people who also love star trek who like to listen to us so that they can be a part of it too so um we love audio feedback but we also accept written feedback you can submit those theories feedback or other general comments or what have you by going to talkthroughmedia.com slash feedback, where you can submit text, or if you have recorded yourself, you can submit your audio. You can also call us at 216-232-6146 and leave us a voicemail. Uh, You can submit written feedback by going to, or sending an email to, I should say, picardcast at talkthroughmedia.com. Or... You can post in our designated episode thread in our Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash Star Trek TTM podcasts. Uh, We also have Twitter for those of you who tweet, uh, which is not me so much. (laughs) (laughs) But we do look at it. Uh, And the Twitter is at PicardCast. Yes. And we should mention if we, because I don't think we mentioned it, the the last episode that we did of the Star Trek Discovery podcast back in July, we were still part of Golden Spiral Media. And since then, uh, we have taken the podcast that we do independent, and we have formed a new network of our podcast called Talk Through Media. So yeah. that's that's uh, that's a big part of what we're doing now. So we're all uh, independent and Ruthie and I uh, are a big part of that network. And uh, we also have the walking dead talk through and fear the walking dead talk through. And they're all part of this new talk through media network. So, yeah. So uh, yeah, exciting. You may be getting this uh, first episode on the star Trek discovery podcast feed that to get the next episode, it will be exclusively on our new podcast feed for the Picard cast and uh, how you can find us. For one thing, you will be able to find us and it's really, really hard to find us. You just go to star Trek Picard.com <laughs> and that will take you to our podcast. Yes, that's right. We own Star Trek Picard.com. So you go to that and that will take you to talk through media.com and the Star Trek Picard cast. So uh, we want to say though, that you may have picked this up from the discovery podcast feed, but look for the Star Trek Picard cast feed on Apple podcasts or whatever podcast client of your choice it may not be there when this episode is released right away but it doesn't take as long as it used to a day or two later you will find us on apple podcasts and uh, subscribe to us because that's where you will find more episodes to come for this and uh, of course if you're getting this on the star trek picard cast feed uh, go to Yay. Star Trek Discovery Podcast.com, and that will also take you to the Star Trek Discovery Podcast feed. So, um, those are ways to get a hold of us, but that's all part of talkthroughmedia.com. Those are all redirects that bring us to the talkthroughmedia.com. But help us out. 
when we post things, we will we will be posting things on the Talk Through Media Facebook page. Those we do that because the Star Trek TTM podcast Facebook group is a private group. I think it's called closed group. That's what it's called. So you can't share those, but if we post them first to the uh, Talk Through Media Facebook page, you can share those. So yeah, you can help us out by sharing them. And we should say the only reason why that group is closed is so that we don't get nutters in there who do crazy stuff. Right. So basically just ask to join and we will let you in as long as you tell us what you like about Star Trek. Yes. That's that's all you have to do. That's the gateway so that we don't get bots. <laughs> yes, exactly. And uh, it is a small but a lively group, and there are a lot of great discussions on there. And that's typically where people submit their feedback to our podcast. And, yeah, that's uh, where the bulk of it comes from. Yeah, and both the Discovery and the Picard podcast we'll use the same Facebook group. The only thing that's really changed is the name of it. So uh, we changed the name and we changed the URL, but it's the same group. So if you belong to it now, you're Yay! already there. Yeah. So uh, we should also mention that since the last time that we podcast on the Star Trek Discovery podcast feed, we have a Patreon. Yes. <laughs> Yes, so go to patreon.com forward slash Brian and Ruthie. So that's easy enough to remember. Yeah, if you want to. I mean, we would love it. Yeah, and we will be releasing some special content specifically to our Patreon subscribers in the next few weeks. Um, Specific Patreon content. Yes, so... We have already uh, some Patreon subscribers that we would like to thank. Yes. Um, thank you. Yes. We would like to thank our patrons. Yes. Uh, Clint McCollum. Thank you. Our good friend from the Talk Through Media Network, Kyle McAdams. Oh, thanks, Kyle. You may know him as Fred from the Netherlands, but Fred Petrie. James Robbins, also known as James the Augmented Sailor, and Lawrence Todd, also known as LT from NC. Thank you so much, yes, guys, you for guys. being our patrons. And uh, if you would like to help out both podcasts and help out myself and Ruthie, and uh, the goal is that next year we hope to make Star Trek Las Vegas. That's that's. The whole goal we want to, but we we also want to be able to, to do this eventually full time. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that our, would be awesome. But that would be our dream. But if uh, we could make it to Star Trek Las Vegas, that would be bueno. <laughs> that, that is our main. Yes, that is our main goal. <laughs> I know. Oh my goodness, <laughs> we're gonna dream big so that when we get the littler things, we'll be happy. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Shoot high, and you know. Because if you if you shoot too low, you'll never achieve it. So exactly, yeah. So anyway, um, we will be coming to you with some uh, exclusive content for Patreon subscribers. So help us out, help out the podcast. Any amount is okay, as little as a dollar. But the more that you you donate, you'll be able to have more interaction with us. There's a, there's actually a tier that allows you to tell us what kind of episodes to do. Mm. So actually LT we're you're at that point. So we, we oh, need to talk to you. LT. So yes. <laughs> so yeah, we we're going to do some special stuff with that. And we, uh, this, a uh, great thing that we finally are doing something we've been planning for a long time. Yeah. So anyway, last, last, things we'll say here is uh, subscribe to us if you're not already doing so both on this for this podcast and the Star Trek Discovery podcast now part of the Talk Through Media Network and yes we will be if you're on the Discovery feed our next episode will be covering uh the first short trek and yeah and also the uh trailer from New York Comic-Con but that 
short trek was titled Q and A, and then shortly after that, we'll cover the the second short trek for this season, uh, the Trouble with Edward. So <laughs> we both see we've seen them already, but uh, we'll be coming out with those uh, and uh, pretty interesting discussion we'll have for that. And then after that, we'll be having some more Picard uh, episodes. So yeah. Our official countdown is 96 days. 96 days. That's right. At the time we're recording this. Song. Time of this recording. That's right. Right. So now you know <laughs> when we recorded. <laughs> yes. 18th of October, uh, Friday. So 2019. Yes. 96 days away from Star Trek Picard. Yeah. So, so anyway, <laughs> we're, we're very excited, as you can tell. Hopefully we didn't ramble on too much, <laughs> but, but if, uh, we, if we did, hopefully you liked it. <laughs> yes. So until next time, I'm Brian and I'm Ruthie. Peace and long life. Live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs>